Hi, my name is Pop. I'm making a video tutorial in Ubuntu Basics demonstrating how you can use a scanner with Linux Ubuntu and I'm demonstrating the Viewpoint Magic Wand Portable Scanner. This is a very small scanner that runs on two AA batteries and you can carry it with you in your pocket. And it has a good feature in that unlike flatbed scanners you can go right up to the center of a book and not miss anything. When you use a regular scanner and the book hangs off the edge, you miss about a half an inch worth of text or picture. Or if you lay the book down flat, getting both sides, the left and the right, it has a, an ugly curvature and it will not come out right. With this scanner, you can go right up to the edge. And it has a memory slot. You can put in as big a memory micro SD as you want to. And after scanning, you can take that micro SD and insert it directly into your laptop for transfer or you can just leave it in place and when you leave it in place then connect the scanner itself by means of a USB cable to your laptop and it will transfer that way. It also does optical character recognition and that's kinda nice because you could be at the library and scan an article and then take it and manipulate that article in your word processor or turn it into an EPUB. Uh, you can do that with type text to anything like that. Well, there's a problem in that the CD that they give you works only with Windows or Macintosh. You also get a little uh, carrying case and a, a lens cleaner and so forth. Let me take the unit out and I'll turn over to the back and we will see what it looks like on the back of the box. I'll set this down and the back of the box tells you the specifications and it's got some pictures. These things vary in price. You can buy them on sale. Uh, you can get them at most office supply stores or online. Some of them come with the memory, some of them don't. They scan either in color or black and white. You can specify and you can get up to 600 by 600 dots per inch. And it works really good. There's an LCD display on it. And the two AA batteries last a long time. So you don't have to worry about recharging uh, batteries and things like that. Let me show you what the unit itself looks like. At the very bottom, you'll see there's an arrow by my thumb. That's the edge. And then over on the other side, there's another arrow. That's the edge. You can scan in between those two arrows. On the bottom, there is a bunch of rollers. And these rollers are the things that make the scanner run. When you roll it along a book or a magazine or a flat surface, that's what does the scanning. And you can see the white long strip there that's glass covered and that is the lit up array of lights that does the actual scanning. You can think of this as a contact camera. Uh, I'm going to turn it over one more time and I think I've got it upside down. Yeah, I better flip it over. You can set the time so that there's a time stamp that is the receptacle for the USB cord and here is your memory slot when you press down on it with your finger it pops in and pops out you can hear it click you can take that out as I say and insert that memory into your computer or if you want to just leave it in place and then the USB cable will do the actual transferring and there are uh, on the top all the controls and there's not much to the controls you can uh, tell it to go C or BW color or black and white and then you can change the number of dots per inch I just leave it at maximum resolution 600 the LCD display here tells you what's cooking and the silver button there that's what you press to get her going and in order to change the batteries, which you don't have to do very often, you just press on this and the uh, top comes off and then you can put in two batteries. There's nothing to that. You're only going to do that once every few months. To turn it on, you just press on this button and when you do, 
the LCD will light up. You have to hold it down. There we go. And it says I've got seven pictures in there. And in order to begin scanning, all you do is hit that button again and you just roll it along the surface of a book or a magazine or any flat surface. For example, this right here. I would just scan this by pressing the button and when I do, it turns green and then you roll it and that's it. Well, I'm going to now go over to my laptop and show you what happens when you plug it in. And when I do that, I'm just going to be plugging in the USB cable here, both into the laptop and to the scanner, and I'll show you what the uh, pictures look like when they transfer. So I'll be switching over from this external camera to a video which is being made by Screencastor. Here I am back again, this time recording on screen with Linux Ubuntu using Screencastor. And I have got the USB cable plugged into my viewpoint. And now I'm going to take the other end of the cable and plug it into my computer. And when I do, you'll see that it pops up as four gigabytes. And it asks me what I want to do. Well, I can transfer the pictures that I have scanned that is in the four gigabyte chip. And I'm just going to turn this off. Well, actually what I can do is uh, open up GIMP. I can open up Shotwell. You can tell it to do anything you want to, but if you tell it to do nothing, then you have a choice of what you want to do. I'm just going to tap on the icon. And when I tap on the icon, oops, I hit it twice it shows everything that is in the folders and since we are not using the intended software that came with it because the intended software is for Windows or Mac only I'm just using Nautilus uh, file manager and I'm going to open up DCIM that is where all the media is and let's see I've got a bunch of pictures in there well the pictures that are in there when I tap on them they're just going to come up with, uh, let's see what it pops up, J image viewer. And these are all in the public domain, by the way, so I'm not uh, stealing anything. I'm rotating this counterclockwise, and if I were to save this, uh, then it would stay uh, counterclockwise. You can use uh, various kinds of image manipulation programs. I'm just going to go over to my 10 key and hit plus and get this bigger. And uh, when I do so, you can see the picture more easily. Uh, I can even go full screen on this. And let's go, where is full screen? F11. And I'll hit plus more, 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 more like that. And I can crop this picture by using a method that I used in a prior uh, tutorial. And I am going to go Windows key Alt S, my custom shortcuts. And the cursor turned into a plus sign. You can see it there. And I'm going to grab uh, this top corner. And I will hit the left trackpad. Oops, I did it wrong. I have to do it again. It took a picture, but that's wrong. I will go Windows key, Alt, S. And now I'm going to grab whatever I want to. And it's going to take a picture. And I saved it in the photos. But I could let's put it on the desktop save and then get out of this and then diminish and then diminish and here this is 
and that's the sort of stuff you can do. Now, you can also do optical character recognition. And optical character recognition allows you to take the photograph or the scan of some text and actually convert it into what is recognized by the computer as actual text which can be manipulated by either a word processing program or put into an EPUB. It's no longer just a picture. Now it's considered as text. Well, there are a whole bunch of optical character recognition programs built in. If you want to go to Dash Home and go to Ubuntu Software Center, you can look up in the Ubuntu Software Center that there are some OCR programs available and they're free and you can download them and you can just type in OCR. Some of them work better than others. Some of them are multi-language. OCR. And there are so many of them that you won't want to use them all. Uh, here's one for Hebrew. I'm not going to be using that. Here is the OCR feeder, the complete optical character recognition suite. And then here is Xsane. Now that's the big one. We have one that's built in that is a truncated version of that. Let me show it to you. You will go to your menu system and uh, in applications you can just type in xsane I think and it's not in there. So let's type in simple. Simple scan. And simple scan is a small version of xsane. But check it out. It says no scanner detected. Even though I've got this scanner plugged in. Well I've got the scanner plugged in and I can transfer stuff. Look over here it's recognized. It's recognized as a transfer device but this magic wand viewpoint device is not recognized as a scanner. It never is never will be unless somebody writes some software for it. It would be nice in my opinion if you could take this device plug it in with a USB cable keep it plugged into the USB cable press the button and used it to scan but you cannot do that. You can only use the USB cable to transfer. Well you can take the pictures and run them over to GIMP and uh, let's let's open this and we're going to go to DCIM and we're going to go to media and we're going to uh, open that with GIMP. GIMP is the GNU image manipulation program and when I go right click I'm going to say open with and there I'm going to say GIMP or I could open up with my paint. You can open it up with the image viewer. You can put it in the Shotwell photo viewer. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. But GIMP is the biggie. This is the one that artists use. And it's a big program. And it is it, it is a program that has quite a big learning curve but I suppose ooh look at here corrupt JPEG data I don't know what that means again these pictures are all in the public domain so I'm not stealing anything hello Google hello YouTube sometimes they kick out my stuff I have got a couple of problems with this uh, viewpoint thing as you can see. Uh, one nice thing is that when you are plugging it in like this you can actually remove the batteries from it and it still works to transfer. So your batteries could be dead and you could still use it to get information to to your computer. The uh, wiggly lines that are on some of the pictures 
uh, have to do with how well you can hold your hand steady as you are scanning. It's aberration and the aberration that is uh, caused by an unsteady hand uh, is not visible when you use a flatbed scanner. When you use a flatbed scanner you don't see anything wiggly. Now this one's pretty straight. Uh, let me get another one in there. Uh, let me go to this one. Occasionally you'll see such wiggly pictures that like on this that you'll have to do it over again because it it just not acceptable. There are some programs in the Ubuntu Software Center which will allow you to unwiggle wiggly pictures and that is helpful but it's better just from the get-go to scan these things straight. You can see down there at the bottom how that's all wiggly. The same thing happens when you use a camera. When you use a camera to take a picture of a page Sometimes you'll be holding the camera at an angle and the top will be, say, narrow and the bottom will be, say, wide or vice versa. Unless you've got the camera dead on, it won't be square. So that brings up the point, why get a scanner at all? Why not just have a camera? Well, it seems to be going in that direction. The scanner is nothing but a contact camera and it has a good high resolution and it really does pick up a good image. This one is limited to 600 by 600. You can stick it in your pocket and you can scan with it on the fly and it records this stuff. You are unable unfortunately to look at the picture immediately. There's no view port on the viewpoint scanner. You can't see anything. You uh, it's just like using one of those cameras from yesteryear where you take a picture with a digital camera and you can't see whether or not you took the picture until later you try looking at it through the computer. I like the magic wand. It works pretty good. You can get up right to the edge of a uh, book. There is a flatbed scanner on the market that does do this, uh, but it is not being sold too much in the United States and it is a little bit on the expensive side. Most uh, scanners seem to be about a hundred bucks. They are also bundling scanners inside of printers. So you'll have like a four function, five function, six function printer that will print, scan, uh, it's a copy machine, it's a fax machine, and it does a little bit of everything but when you bundle things together like that it doesn't do any one particular thing very well and then if some aspect of it breaks well there there you are you gotta throw the whole nine yards away and start over again my name is Pop and I've got a whole bunch of videos on YouTube called Ubuntu Basics and I thank you very much